going on, guys? Welcome to the first episode of Rich Trainer, Poor Trainer with myself, Eric Janicki, and I have his fiance, Alina. So we are super excited about launching this. Basically, what we are trying to do is help trainers bring their business online or scale online and work with you on your marketing, your sales, and your fulfillment to just bring it to another level. Um, why you guys should be listening to us, uh, together we've launched a seven-figure online fitness coaching business. Cumulatively, we coach over a thousand clients. Um, and so what we want to do is just create a ton of free value for you guys. So if you guys are interested, please subscribe to this channel. It's completely free to you. It would mean the world to us. So we're super excited about launching this. We'd love to get a lot of feedback from you about what you guys are liking, what you'd like to hear more of. Today, we are going to start with one of the biggest topics is how can I possibly get people the same results online as I could in person seeing them. So I've got a couple of questions written out. Um, we're just gonna kind of go off, riff off each other um, and hopefully you guys get a good amount of value. So first question that I have is for Alina is what was your story um, and why were you reticent to transfer a transition online? Um, so for me, I think the hard part was that I was as successful as I was. So prior to COVID, I was, you know, a in-person trainer in Hollywood. I was working 10 to 12 hours a day. I had basically an unlimited supply of clients at that point, paying me basically top dollar um, in Hollywood. Uh, you know, one of those kind of situations, I guess you could say, where financially I was very, very well set up, but also I actually enjoyed what I did. So I didn't necessarily find it a struggle. Um, I'm someone that's very type A, I prefer productivity and working. So to me, actually having that kind of a workload and then also seeing the financial payoff was amazing. So if somebody at that time would have told me like, hey, you know, maybe you should take your business online, you have this opportunity to not only save time, but make the same amount of money, if not more, I would have been very hesitant to take that on because prior what I was doing with any type of like online programs and business, I was selling programs for like 100, 200 bucks. So to me, it just didn't make sense to try to sell, you know, a thousand nutrition plans to try to match what I was making in person at that time. Um, so the reason that I got into online coaching actually because of Eric, when COVID started, we were basically forced into this situation. Um, would I have done it without COVID? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Looking back now, I'm very thankful that I did. And I was forced into this situation because I am making more than I was um, in person in, uh, I mean, to be honest, less than half the time I could stand to probably double my business right now from a time perspective, um, if that makes sense. So it's been a very beneficial venture for myself once I figured out how to uh, value our business in the correct way. Yeah. And I think what my big reticence was before getting into the space was essentially, first of all, not being able to feel like I could get this people the same results as if I were seeing them in person. And second of all, like just being so stuck in my ways. Um, and I think that for me, when I, I first, you know, got into the working world, I was working in finance and so was Alina. And I think that when we were, when we switched over to fitness and we're own boss and, you know, training in the gym all day, it was like a dream come true. Right. So I think letting go of that too was very tough to think about because the dream before was going from working in an office, building somebody else's dream, and then going to a gym and be able to train your own clients and pick who you work with. It was like, yeah, this is the dream. But then you start to understand that there's no scalability. There's no vertical. You're trading your time for money. You're beholden to other people's schedules. And that's when it kind of hit me of crap, we're going to have kids, we're going to have other obligations that are going to prohibit us from being in the gym from, you know, 5, 6 a.m. until 8 or 9 at night. Sometimes Alina was training till 10 and I would make her dinner uh, for 10 p.m., which is absolutely absurd. But I think that it is this huge fear, right, of having something that's successful and leaving it for something that has greater potential. But there's also the unknown. There's the uncertainty of, will I be successful? Will I be able to take my expertise and basically expand on it online or, or base, or let's say, uh, facilitate those same skills and results to people as I was doing in person. Um, and I think that being forced into it was probably one of the best things that's ever happened to us because like she said, we have more time freedom. We have more ability to affect people in greater ways. I think that leads greater, like obviously perfectly in the next question is 
what are the biggest factors in getting people consistent results without ever seeing them? I think this is the thing that I get asked the most from in-person trainers, even people that I used to work with is like, they'll see the results we're getting for our clients. They're like, how are you doing that without ever seeing them? And so I'll let Alina take this one. Like she is one of the best coaches I have ever met. Yeah. So, I mean, here's the thing too, right? When you're training online, the biggest thing that you're doing for your clients is literally being there for them in person. You're building your rapport and you're, you know, motivating and pushing them through a workout. Realistically speaking, especially with my schedule, I did try to give my clients, you know, nutrition suggestions and little guidelines here and there, but they weren't doing it. Um, and it was very hard for a lot of people to stay consistent. And I think the mentality of most of our clients are, Hey, I have a trainer. I'm going to the gym. I'm checking the box. I should be getting results. Right. But I mean, they're coming in two, three, four times a week for one hour and they're not doing any of the other things that they should be doing because in their mind, all they think is, you know, important when it comes to getting those results and making those changes is working out. So what I learned actually as an online coach um, is the value of not having someone come in in person because those workouts are literally the smallest piece of the pyramid of what these people need to do in order to get sustainable results. So in order of importance, um, where we add value as coaches, it's almost like consultants, basically, right? In the online space, you don't have the ability to be in person with people. So I guess you could say charm them, maybe push them to do that one less rep. So in order to add value in a different way and actually in a much better way, you're giving them an entire wellness and lifestyle and health change. So the way that you want to look at it at the top of the pyramid, you have nutrition. Um, then we continue into lifestyle. Then we move on to the training portion. So the training, the workouts are actually the last little bit of uh, the smallest piece of the puzzle with regards to what people have to do to see results, right? The biggest components are going to be, again, what they're eating, um, how they're actually scaling their nutrition over time and understanding the importance of high quality foods, things like that. Second part of that, which is really, really important and just something that I personally had a very hard time driving home and to be quite honest, just didn't have the knowledge back then um, is that people need to focus on sleep quality. People need to focus on stress management. They need to focus on activity outside of training. They need to focus on improving their mood and motivation, improving their energy patterns, um, things that people don't really think about when it comes to training. All they think about is I need to die and feel broken after my workout in order to get results. And that's really not the case. It's actually very counterproductive for people to have that mindset and put themselves through those rigorous workouts because what it does is it actually raises their stress hormones, their cortisol levels. So although they may be dropping body fat, let's say from creating a deficit, they're actually raising inflammation and it's impacting them negatively in other parts of their life and potentially hindering them from actually getting the results that they should be getting. So when we moved into the online space, I actually learned so much about what it takes to achieve not only physique or performance results, but overall wellness and how the physique and performance results actually tie into that. And we've been you know, uh, extremely successful with the results that we're getting for our clients. I mean, I wasn't even getting a fraction of these type of results from my clients before. And again, not through any fault of my own, I guess you could say that I wasn't trying, but when you're a one-on-one -on -one trainer, again, your focus is to be knowledgeable, be charming and push people through that workout. Right. But again, if they're coming in three hours a week, what are they doing in all of those other hours? And that's the part that really matters. Those three hours, those workout sessions that you're giving them, again, very insignificant in the long grand scheme of things and what it takes for most of these people to be successful. Now, if you're working with, let's say like performance athletes, you know, NFL, NBA players, that's a different story because again, performance is their goal. Although lifestyle, nutrition, and everything else we talked about is also very important for them. So I think this transition for us has been highly beneficial because we've learned how to service our clients in a way that suits them outside of just showing up to a session with the trainer. We're actually empowering them to uh, get the results that they want and learn how to maintain them indefinitely versus just depend on their trainer to show up, to push them through a workout and then have no idea what to do the rest of the time. Yeah, I think that it's a nail on the head, obviously. But I think too, the way I break this down for coaches very easily is there's two reasons why people are more successful online. One is the medium of delivery because you are focusing on the whole picture like Alina was speaking about. Number two is the expectation. And what I'll break that down. The reason that expectation setting is so important because if somebody comes to you to buy one-on-one -on -one sessions, training sessions, the expectation is that you are giving them workouts and that's it. So when you try to go, because we'll have, I'll have trainers say like, well, I try to give my clients nutrition. I try to work with them on their sleep. It's like, yeah, 
But when they came to you, they bought in-person training sessions. So when you try to provide extra value outside of that set expectation, they're not going to take it seriously because that's not what was sold to them. So if they go into their package thinking that the workouts are the most important thing, that's what they're going to focus on because they're like, why am I not seeing results? I'm seeing you three times a week for an hour, but they're not doing anything else, right? They're postmating all their food. They're sleeping four hours a night. They're drinking three glasses of wine a night, like all of these other things, but they're not going to take you seriously. Now, when you get somebody on the phone for online coaching, the expectation from the very first call is set that they are going to be focusing on lifestyle changes, nutritional specificity, not just the training. We're also going to be working on obviously habit forming skills, education, right? Because if you can actually give the people, give people the tools to succeed long-term, that's where the value driver is. So that's why I think that that's the two main components. You've got expectation setting with your clients from day one, as well as your framework. And to expand on that a little bit, and this is something we've worked on a long time is what, it, what are those main principles and framework that we need to provide to people in order to get them consistent, successful results. And for us, that's like obviously effective goal setting, scheduling, lifestyle changes, training, nutritional specificity, metabolic scaling, um, being cognizant of where their hormones and thyroid are, is things like that, making sure they're on top of their blood work. So that's our framework, but that's what you would have to start to create as a coach based on your niche, meaning the market that you're serving, what is your unique framework in order to get people consistent results? And those are the two main things that you want to start to think about. Yeah. I mean, the last bit, I'll just build off of that too. As an online coach, what you want to sell is the framework. You're not selling a training program. You're not selling a nutrition plan. You're not selling macros. You're not selling intermittent fasting. You're selling a framework. And this is what we talk about to, you know, the students in our program tremendously is how to actually sell that framework. Because the people that you talk to, they've heard, you know, macro plans a million times. They've done the, what is it? Um, Weight Watchers with points <laughs> counting. They've done the Barry's Bootcamp classes. They've done the free running classes. They've done all that stuff. And the reason that they're coming to you is because they're not getting results because nobody's taught them that framework that they need to implement. All that they've done is gotten these like one-off pieces that don't fit within their life. Nobody's teaching them how to fit it within their life. And the big thing is too, a lot of these diets and programs out there are so restrictive. So all they're teaching people how to do is cut calories, cut carbs, you know, do super intense bouts of cardio. And like we said, these things just don't work because people can't make these sustainable and they can't make them fit in their life. So again, your job as a coach in the online space now becomes to set up that correct framework for your clients. So you're selling them that framework. And as a consultant, you're helping them implement that framework, which yes, includes training and nutrition plans. But one thing I've said over and over is you can't just sell training and nutrition. Training and nutrition is something that they can go to bodybuilding.com and give for free for $19.99. So why would they pay you a high ticket price to literally just give them a training program, a nutrition plan, if you don't know how to get them from A to Z in an effective way and actually teach them how to maintain those results, how to improve their energy, how to manage their stress levels, um, and how to kind of use all those underlying pillars to see results on the surface as well, physique-wise, performance-wise, in every aspect of life. And you have to remember, these people are suffering from these symptoms, these ailments, these like syndromes, whatever you want to call them, because if they're eating like shit, they're going to feel like shit. So if you can tell them, Hey, I can give you a training program and I could give you a nutrition plan, but I could also improve your energy. I could help you minimize the effects of stress. I could help teach you how to improve your mood and motivation. I could help teach you how to build your mental relationship with food. So you could actually enjoy carbs and enjoy social outings and not be afraid of eating. That's what you're trying to sell as a coach. And that's the value that you could add in the online space that again, like Eric said, people, sorry, People don't come to you um, in a one-on-one -on -one setting for that. It's like if they walk into a store and they want to buy a couch and you're trying to sell them a bed and an outdoor patio set, like that's great in theory, but that's not what they came from. They don't want that from you. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. So just moving along, what were some of the biggest things that surprised you about moving online? And that could be from an impact perspective, monetarily, time. What were some of the biggest surprises to you when moving online? Um, I mean, I would say the two biggest things for me, first of all, was monetary. I mean, I was shocked at the fact that I was undervaluing myself and I didn't know how to value the service that I can provide. And again, I was selling programs for 200 bucks, 250 bucks, having a hard time convincing people to do that. So when I learned how to sell my program for 
thousands of dollars. And not only that, but get people to actually see the value of what I'm doing. That was probably the most shocking thing to me alongside, like I said, that I can work from home, literally. Um, and this isn't just me typing on a keyboard or working from, you know, my laptop all day long. That's not what online coaching is. We do check-in calls. We build rapport with people. I have great relationships with the clients I've worked with. I have, have I've had some that have been with me for years at this point. Um, so I think the monetary value of what you can uh, accomplish online was probably one of the most shocking things for me. And like Eric mentioned, there is no cap now, right? The cap is non-existent because you're not trading time for money. So again, I was training 12 hours a day. There were days um, that I would train, I think it was Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6 a.m. up to 10 p.m. with an out one hour break at lunch from one to two. I mean, I would get lucky if a client would cancel and I had an extra hour to just chill or stretch. But other than that, I mean, that's an insane schedule. Again, I thought it was great. I'm in my 20s. I'm making a shit ton of money. I'm like, this is awesome. But how am I going to sustain this? If we want to have kids, I don't want to just pay a nanny to watch my kids and be gone all day. Right. So the fact that I can make as much money and more money and have no cap work from home, we have so much freedom. Now we make our own schedule. We don't have to worry about not making money when we're traveling, which as a business owner, you do. Um, So that to me was amazing for one. And then the second again is how much value I can actually add to someone's life that I wasn't adding prior because that's not what they were coming to me for. So instead of coming to me as a trainer now, they're coming to me again as a consultant, as a coach for health and wellness and everything that it's going to take for them to never need another trainer again, to never need another coach again, and to actually be in great shape and be healthy. Absolutely. And I think that one of the main things has been like how much Alina and I have connected over the last few years just because we've been building this business together. We spent so much time together. We've been able to play, we add sports, we play tennis together now um, and just be able to spend so much more time together at home with our, with our puppies and everything like that. Um, But I will, I will interject and say the one thing that we have going for us is that we live together all during COVID, spend more time together than anyone can imagine and have yet to be sick of each other. So I don't know how many couples can do that, but we'll take it on that one. Yeah. So I think that the, what I can break it down to is the biggest surprises to me when transitioning online were financial impact, time and utility. And to break those down really quickly, obviously financially, I had no idea what you could make online because I didn't think people were willing to spend high ticket prices for an online package, but it's all about how you position it, how, how much value you're bringing, how much results you're bringing. Because when you transition from selling your time to result, you're able to charge whatever that result is worth to that client. Um, number two being impact, the surprise of how much help, like how frequently we were getting results for our clients as compared to when I was just doing it in person. Uh, number three was time, getting so much time back uh, and making more money. And lastly, was just utility, like the time freedom, this, like I said, spending more time with Alina, um, having greater levels of happiness. I think those were the hugest surprises to me. And that's why I'm so excited about bringing this to other coaches that feel like the only medium uh, moving forward for them is always doing it in person. Well said. I know. (laughs) Uh, And lastly, before we break off this first episode, and we're going to be getting into guys more like high level, like social media strategy, marketing, how Alina is like completely exploded her business using Yelp, things like that we're going to be getting into. Uh, But I wanted to just start this first episode with just like where, well, like one of the biggest misconceptions of transitioning online and how you can start to think about breaking through those mental hurdles and those self-limiting beliefs. So last question I have is, and I think Alina will love this one, what are the biggest mistakes that you see other coaches making when either bringing their business online or coaching online? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, again, in, in the last few years, I've, I've learned so much about what it takes to be an actual successful coach. And, and I mean, someone that, you know, lets results speak for themselves, because to me, my coaching or my client's results is a reflection of my coaching. So if I'm not giving my clients results and I'm taking my money, that's not, I mean, I'm taking their money. That's not okay. And there are a lot of coaches who do that coaches who kind of gamble with their, you know, clients health coaches who have no idea what they're doing, who just give their clients a, you know, shitty nutrition plan that they found online with 1200 calorie diet and some kind of recycled training program that everybody goes through that doesn't pay attention to 
that client's likes and dislikes and specifications with regards to their goals and their injuries and their limitations and their movement patterns. And just like the human component of their clients actually being able to sustain these protocols. So there are a lot of coaches out there that, that quite frankly, are just trainers, um, unfortunately, who only know how to basically train someone one-on-one and quite often not well, unfortunately. Um, So one thing that I would encourage all of you guys that are looking to get into the online space, that are looking to sell high ticket programs, that are looking to get people results and change their lives and add values, please know what you're doing. Know how to coach someone, know how to interpret biofeedback, know how to scale someone's nutrition, um, know how to adjust their training program based on their needs, their likes and dislikes, the volume that they can actually commit to, um, know how to still build rapport with them in an online setting, you know, set up calls with them, do check-ins, like show them who you are as a person, even though you guys don't see each other face to face, it doesn't mean that you can't build that relationship, that you can't provide them support mentally, physically, um, that you can listen to them week over week. And if they tell you like, Hey, I, you know, I'm losing weight, but I feel like shit, don't encourage them and say, that's great. Don't worry about it. You'll overcome that hump, figure out why they're feeling like shit. And that's again, I'm going to keep bringing this up over and over what your job is as a coach is to, to be a consultant for that person and to develop that framework for them, not to steal, you know, a, or I guess put together some kind of half-assed shady training program that you saw on bodybuilding.com that says, this is for muscle gain and this is for body fat loss. And then to just pass that on to your clients, your job is to be that consultant for your clients that they can rely on, that they come to knowing that they're paying you know, a, again, high ticket price, a lot of money for you to actually know what you're doing and deliver results. Yeah. I think that's the number one. I think there's just such a hyper focus on getting clients and getting high ticket prices. And I think that so many of these programs that teach it, they prey on that. I know that I did a course, I won't say who it was from that. It was all predicated on just like sell, 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 no care for fulfillment. He was like, Hey, if you just have to, you know, put something down on like a word doc in terms of the workouts, just send it out. And it was all like 90% lead gen and sales. And I didn't feel good about that. So when we created our program, there's such an emphasis on fulfillment and such a focus on becoming a better coach. And I think that's the number one mistake that coaches are making is that there is this huge just desire to close deals without having the chops as a coach and not just thinking themselves as a trainer and transitioning to that mindset of a coach and actually delivering sustainable results. Um, And then the other big mistake I see is people trying to be a catch-all. I think creating a niche and focusing on working with a specific type of client with specific needs uh, brings more value to your service because when you when somebody sees you offering something and they see it specifically meant for them. So let's say you are a mother of three and you cater to moms over 40. First of all, you are the proof of concept. Second of all, those women will see so much more value in what you're providing because of the fact that it is niche. And they're like, wow, this is actually built for me. And they're getting, this coach is getting specific results for these women that are just like me. So I think that's another big mistake is not just trying to be a catch all for anybody. I can go, you know, I can do weight loss. I can do muscle gain. I can do men. I can do women. I can do, you know, postpartum, whatever it is. Like you need to create something unique. And then beyond that, which is the framework of getting people those consistent results. So I've got a ton more mistakes. I'll hold off on it because I could just sit here for the next 45 minutes, but we'll be getting into this on later episodes. Uh, Next week, I think we're going to cover just effective marketing and how to appeal to your ideal client, whether it be on social media, garnering views, getting really good client testimonials. So we'll cover all that next week. Uh, But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. Two things. One, subscribe to this fucking channel. Like we're going to give so much value to you guys on this podcast. I'm also going to be putting out other videos on growing your online business. So please subscribe. Like I said, free to you. It means the world to us. Number two, if you guys are interested in working with us specifically to help you grow your online business, the link is below in the description to sign up for our VCA program. Best program in the world, guys. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, Alina, if you have any final words, Uh, If not, we will see you guys on the next episode. I think you said it all. All right. Rock and roll. See you guys next week.